Hi, this is Vicki Go for the Parnell. And I have come to share a dream. I had it last night at 2.19 a.m. and 6.22 a.m. It is 7.29.23. Today is 7.29.23 at 11.49 a.m. And I apologize for not having all my equipment, uh, the lights and everything, because my grandkids are here and fell asleep in the living room. So praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. They're blessings from God. Well, with that being said, where this dream in here was repeated, the Lord also gave me the second Corinthians 13 1. And I'm going to read that before we go any further, before we pray. 2 Corinthians 13 1. This is the third time I am coming to you. In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. And again, I had this dream at 2.19 a.m. and 6.22 a.m. Um, this was after I had prayed and committed my, my body, mind, soul, spirit to the Lord before I go to bed. Pray over it, cover myself in the blood. And asked her if there's anything he needed to show me. Like he showed me right now. The enemy walking. Yeah. Those ones right here. They need Jesus. Lord, please save them. I hold these things not to their charge. This time is for the Lord. And I dedicate it to the Lord. Lord, forgive me for even getting my mind off on that. Lord, I praise you. I praise you. And I bind any spirits that would try to come into this. Let's pray. Now, Holy Spirit, I ask in Jesus' name, you take over. Over. You take over. You take over me. I surrender myself totally to you. Don't let me say a word that's not from Father God or Jesus. Holy Spirit, you are the teacher. You're the one that brings all things to our remembrance, according to John 14, 26. 1 John 2, 27. And I stand on these. Because we have been given the mind of Christ. When we get saved, we get my, the mind of Christ. Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Yes, Luke 10, 19. But, 1 Timothy 2, 7. 1 Timothy 2, 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, which is the Holy Spirit, but of love, which is God, and of a sound mind. And it says we have the mind of Christ. And I choose to operate in that. And to cast out every vain imagination. And things that exalt itself against you father. As I press on to this high calling. But you have warned me father. In, oh, nah, 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 nah. in, in repeatedly many times. To pray over these videos. Before after and during so in the name of jesus father i place this under the blood of jesus i place the equipment under the blood of jesus i seal it and i seal my enemies in the blood of jesus and now i take every trigger every trap every dart every scheme every attack and in the name of jesus while it's sealed in that blood i dismantle them in jesus name so no harm can come to me and all I've loved, whether it be trigger upon trigger upon trigger or whether it's just one father. This is war and I thank you for showing me to do this. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, I reactivate them and send them to them. I reject what they're trying to send. I do not align with Satan and I place this prayer and this video i hide it from the enemies i invoke the barrier of stealth and invisibility by invoking the name of jesus upon it because within that name of jesus is found the power of the trinity god the father god the son and God, the Holy Spirit, the three that are one. And this is why Jesus' name and how his name has been highly exalted above all others. So I stand in the power of your name, Jesus, and yours alone. And I speak these words in your authority, in your command. It's not a dream I wanted to share. But I will be obedient, Lord. And I don't care who rises against me, friend or foe.
In Jesus' name, I shall go forth and do all you have called me to do because it's in your strength and you're the one that called me and quit me, not anyone else. As with each child of God. Now, every spirit that's been assigned in every attack, every trap, every gizmo, every gadget, you know, I cancel all magic, I cancel all witchcraft, I cancel, I burn up all voodoo dolls, cauldrons, pots, such like. I sweep through in the name of Jesus with the right arm of God and I sanctify every, every ritual site with the blood of Jesus, making it from unholy to holy. I dedicate it to you, Lord. I take it from the enemy in Jesus' name where I can. Because, God, you know what, what can and cannot be. In everything I pray, God, it's with the exception of, but, God, you do whatever you need to do in these things. Because sometimes you need the enemy to see. Sometimes you need them to fall into their own trap or to further our advantage. Because you said in Romans 8, 28, all things work together for good to them that love the Lord, who are called according to your purpose. Not the purpose of Satan. Many are called, but few are chosen. So, Lord, I choose to walk in this calling. Lord, give us strength. Lord, I'll bless my enemies, those that would rise up against me, against this ministry, friends and family, against my friends and family and all. Lord, I say, hold it not to their charge. Hold it not to their charge. Those that speak unknowingly against us. Hold it not to their charge. He said to love thy neighbor as thyself. And do unto others as you would have them do to you. Help me to show love in every situation. But without being walked on. By still holding ground as you've called us to do. I will not compromise. And in my life, Father, when you say get the sin out, I'm getting the sin out. I'm getting out anything you show me, God. I want to be bride ready. I want to be ready. But when you split those eastern skies, Jesus, or for whatever my next walk is, to be bride ready, living pure, spotless, and holy. And we can only do that through you, through complete surrender. Through complete surrender to the Holy Spirit. And when he shows us something, God, help us have the strength to let it go or to face it. So we will be bride ready. Shake up your bride. Shake up your people. Shake up this world, God. They don't see what's coming. Antichrist is here. So, Father God, send this word out. North, south, east, west, on the winds of the Holy Spirit. Soften the hearts of the people. Soften their eyes and their ears to the truth of your words. Not mine, your words. You are truth and truth alone. So I send this out standing on Isaiah 50, 55, 11, Lord. That says your word will not return to you void, but it will accomplish all that you've set it out to do. So in Jesus' name, I send this out. But in Jesus' name, I bless my enemies and I bless my friends. I bless my family. In Jesus' name, let your perfect will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And yes, Lord, I pray for those that you have raised up to take America down. They need salvation too. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Let me get a drink. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Nothing like cold coffee. Been in here with the Lord for a while. <laughs> okay, again, I had this dream 729.23 at 2.19 a.m. and 6.22 a.m. And both times I was left shook. This is titled, Antichrist and the Chainsaw Dream. Holy Spirit, lead me. Be my voice. I dreamed I was working for a man who was quickly rising to power. This dream began, though, where I find myself in a country setting. 
I am not myself, but a tall, thin, white woman with red short hair that's full of bounce in its natural waves. I didn't write it, but she's a younger, like in her late 20s. I am wearing a, a plaid skirt whose black and white with brown stripes are tightly knit together that goes to right above my knees. A white pullover short sleeve knit blouse lets me know the temperature to me is as comfortable. Silver narrow three inch high heels are upon my feet. This is definitely not the real me, but in this dream I am here to where I can see, know, and interact on it fully. And the Lord just reminded me he wanted a verse read. Second Thessalonians two seven. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who letteth will let until he taketh out of the way. He who now letteth restrains, hold back. Some people call him the restrainer. Will let until he be taken out of the way. Verse 8. And then shall the wicked be revealed, whom used to say lawless one, um, and then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Keep that in mind as we go into this dream. I found myself walking into a large building carrying a clipboard to my chest and a black cell phone and an ink pen clutched in my hands. It looked like a bustling room full of people and voting machines. But the voting has ended. I knew it was not a vote that was being cast for men and women to be placed into high positions of power in the government. But it all centered around a controversial law or bill that was being voted on to possibly be passed by the people. Yet I felt that I felt this concerned the whole world and not just a single country. I looked around at the armed men in black suits with earwigs, earpieces, earwigs, and I know they're at each location where voting has occurred around the world. My eyes fall upon a heavy set black man in a medium green suit with a dark hue to it, also wearing a pale yellow button up shirt with tiny pearl buttons. And a dark red vertical with dark red vertical and horizontal stripes running in wide patterns across it. The shirt didn't go with the suit at all, but in the dream it seemed normal. As the black man noticed me, I can tell he is not happy. I'm here. He reaches up and loosens his navy blue tie from around his neck. I paste a smile upon my face and walk up to the now sweating man. Merrill Donnell. He would like an update. Vice Secretary Midge. We're still counting the votes, he said in a hurried voice. I realized at this moment none of the armed guards moved in my direction when I entered the building and I knew I could come and go without any interference because the man I worked for was of great, great importance. I begin speaking again. Mayor O'Donnell, he didn't ask if the counting was completed. He wants an update on where the voting stands in its count now, even before you have finished. Excuse me. Mayor O'Donnell's face begins sweating even more. He does, he said hurriedly. Um, well, it hasn't fully passed yet. The restraining bill has not been replaced yet by our count so far, but it's close. You know that it's the one with the majority vote that wins. I am aware of that, I replied matter-of-factly. Where does the vote stand at? Vice Secretary Midge, we have to get at least over 50% of the votes for the old restraining bill to be passed and the new freedom bill to become law. We're at 49% in this district. Hmm, I said sharply. 
He is not going to like this. The man in the green suit begins sweating even more profusely, and he takes out a white handkerchief and wiped his forehead and face. Then he spoke again, almost as if in desperation. The votes are in, but not all are fully counted. But don't forget, our total shall be added into all the others of the world's voting centers. And if it's over 50%, then the law automatically becomes a worldwide law that's effective immediately. Yes, this is true, I replied. I shall inform him of where your district currently stands, Merrill Donnell. But I will tell you, he will not be pleased by these results. Merrill Donald's eyes widened as if in fear. Vice Secretary Midge, I have done everything exactly as I was instructed to do in the district to change the hearts of this people from being restrained to full freedom. Freedom from guilt, freedom to love, or whatever they choose, even if it's a chair they choose to profess to love and marry. I have educated the people of this district on the freedom of choice, the freedom on who should live or who should die, freedom to choose your own gender or your own God. I have done it all, he finished almost desperately. If you have done all that, you have been instructed to do, then it should go favorably in the voting for him, I replied. He also wants to know, what's the voter turnout number here? Oh yes, I've got those ready too. According to the gathered information, those in favor of the Freedom Law were the ones who came out to do most of the voting. Those we have labeled here as Freedom Resisters that are supposed to be supporters of the Restrainer Law in place were no shows, except for a few, and those were some of the first ones here. We had to listen to them spew their beliefs while they were here. Freedom of speech, they would say. Not for long, I replied, then continued. Did you gather this information for him? I sure did, the mayor said with a smile, as if happy he could give me some good news to take to the man we are referring to as him in the stream. He hands me a thick manila envelope, and I hear myself say, I shall place them with the others, and then the scene change. Excuse me. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much. I just love you, Lord. I am in a suave office building with fancy, expensive furniture, standing and talking with the man I know as Antichrist. He is dressed in an expensive black suit, black tie, with a crisp white clean shirt. His right hand is in his right pocket as I give him the results for all the voting districts worldwide. We are at 50%. One more percent and the freedom law will become absolute law for all of our world. He takes his hand out of his pocket and rubs his hands together almost gleefully. It's our time, he says joyfully, but I don't feel he's talking to me, but someone inside him. It makes me shudder slightly, but oh, he's such a great man for our world. I heard the door open, and in walks a very tall young man of stocky build, dressed in denim overalls, and a sleeve and a long sleeve oyster colored shirt with red pinstripe lines set wide apart, running both horizontally and vertic vertically upon it. The buttons are clear, but dull in their color. I know this giant of a man in this dream. He's named Bubba John. And yes, that's the name, Bubba John. Next to Bubba John is a young boy about 12 years old, in age by his looks. I know the young 12-year-old too. He calls himself Titus. Bubba John, the tall, husky man in overalls, seems totally at ease in the fancy office with all its expensive furnishings. So does Titus. 
the man antichrist didn't seem surprised at all to see them enter the office unannounced perimeter is secure bubba john spoke in a clear intelligent sounding voice ah bubba john my dear friend of old thank you he said smoothly and with seductive charm how is our young protege doing he asked bubba john but he's looking at titus with an almost vulture-like stare and false grin. Bubba John replied, He's learning quickly, and at his age, he can gain more access to places excuse me, others cannot. Ah, good, good, Antichrist replied, almost gleefully as he looked again at Titus. Titus, what have you learned today, young man? he asked. I learned how to hack into a security system and changing the binary code with my own, which caused at that proper moment, the pre-planned moment, for the security to fail. When implemented later, we will have no problem removing the electronic security of any who stands against your rule, young Titus said quickly. Happy to be able to report directly to Antichrist himself. Ah, oh, that's wonderful, Antichrist said to Titus. Thy security midge, why don't you take Titus to the eatery room and let him enjoy some refreshments for a job well done? Titus' face lit up as I laid my clipboard and files down on a nearby desk. Come on, Titus, I said, and we began exiting the room. Before I fully shut the door behind us, I heard these words spoken. Bubba John, is he still pure? Has he been touched in any way? not in his body. I have kept him safe as you have instructed me to do. He is a good kid. That he is, the man of sin replied back. Then the door fully shut and the scene changed again. Excuse me. Excuse me. Thank you, Lord. All right, next scene. The man Antichrist, Bubba John, Titus and I are walk, all walking down a gravel road, and we're still dressed the same. We appear to be in the country or countryside, but there are well-trimmed bushes nearby, so it could have been a courtyard. I'm not sure. We are conversing as we're walking all in distance of hearing each other, even though Titus and Bubba John are a few feet in front of us. This man, Antichrist, a man of such great importance in our world has no other bodyguards here to protect him besides his longtime friend, Bubba John. I feel Bubba John and he have somehow grown up together or have known each other for quite some time. I feel, though, too, he's here more to protect Titus than the man Antichrist, who doesn't appear to need any protection for some reason. I am watching Titus talk with Bubba John and I can tell they have formed a genuine bond of friendship between the two. Antichrist is speaking. Vice Secretary Midge, give me the latest update on the vote to remove the restraining, the letteth law. I've got it right here, I replied quickly and efficiently. As I began looking at the information I had written down prior because I knew this would be the first thing he would be asking about. Almost every district's vo votes have been computated, but a few. We are still holding at 50%. It's almost as if some unseen force is keeping either side of the votes from going past the 50% mark. It's that filthy Nazarene and his praying, warring people. I've had enough of the delay. My time is now, according to the scriptures of truth, he said vehemently. Then he let out a string of vulgar and nasty curse words. I was stunned that such a suave, posed, charming intellectual man could spew such filth and hate. Yet I said nothing as I blamed it on the fact that we had all worked so hard for this law to pass for the Freedom Act to become absolute law which would pave the road ahead for this great man's rise to ruler of our world. We desperately needed peace. 
I had also, since working with this man, learned of all the lies found within the laws, found within the law of the restrainer. Antichrist always at times would call it the he who letteth law in private instead of the restraining law, yet I never questioned him about it because he is such a great man with a wealth of knowledge that few men or women possess inside of one brain. I must speak with my father, Antichrist said quickly. I must prepare him a sacrifice worthy for this cause. I watched as his eyes fell upon Titus walking a few feet ahead of us, laughing at something Bubba John had said. Perfect, Antichrist said, as he licked his lips wickedly then yelled out, Change of plans, Bubba John. Prepare Titus for sacrificial offerings. Bubba John wheeled around quickly. No, you said not this one, he yelled back at him. Plans change. You have your orders. Do it now, Antichrist replied curtly. What's he mean, sacrificial offerings, Titus asked Bubba John, his eyes wide in fear. Don't you worry about it, Bubba John said. I'm here to protect you. Antichrist seethed with anger. Just at, just at this moment, we pass by a barn with hay everywhere. There is a wall built in the front under the awning part that has wood extended out like a countertop of wood. There upon it laid a chainsaw. Excuse me. Lord. Help me, Lord. Thereupon it laid a chainsaw. He whipped the chainsaw easily into his hands, looked at me with a malicious grin, and said, Grab Titus's hand and walk the other way, unless you want to see me handle this disobedient flea. Then he started the chainsaw. Bubba John and Titus turned around in shock. I grabbed Titus's hand and yelled, and I yelled firmly to him, Walk, but don't look behind. As we began, began walking, we could hear Bubba John's screams. And the sounds of the chainsaw cut into bone and flesh. I couldn't walk very fast because of the narrow three-inch heels of my shoes. Titus's face had lost all its color, and I could tell he was in shock. So am I. I heard a noise behind us. It is a man of sin. He walks up beside us and grabs Titus's other hand. I glance over at him. He is covered in blood and pieces of his once friend, Bubba John's flesh and bone. He notices me looking at him and he speaks as if everything is normal and that he hasn't just sawed up his dear lifelong friend into multiple pieces. I do not tolerate disobedience in my ranks. Remember this, Midge. My eyes then were transported to the blood-soaked area where the tiny pieces of Bubba John remained as I realized he, Antichrist, had no remorse at all for what he had done or for what he's about to do to poor Titus. And yet, the world loves him. As the scene began fading from my view, I heard these words spoken from the heavens above. The time is now for the man of sin's full rise. He is positioned already to take his place. Yet very few of my children recognize or see it. So in love with this world they have become. When he who holds back the Antichrist is removed, there will be no one to hold back the man of sin, Satan's puppet, from doing evil beyond your understanding to all who oppose him. Many of my church and body are playing Russian roulette with their lives and souls. You are not clean before me. Your hands, excuse me, your hearts are still divided between the love of this world and for me, Jesus, your Savior. I am coming after those with clean hearts. Those who will allow my Holy Spirit to examine you closely, then in obedience allow him to help you 
clean your hearts and lives up to my holy standards. This is not a game, but a reality. I have sent warnings in my holy word. I have sent warnings by prophets of old and prophets of new. Will you listen now, my people, or will you wait until you are being beheaded or tortured before you finally obey my voice and get the sin, all sin, out of your lives? It's your choice. Then I woke both times with my heart beating and panting heavily in my breathing. O oh Jesus, O oh Jesus, help me to be found pure and spotless to you. Do whatever it takes, no matter how painful in my life, to make me a ready bride in you. And that's the dream. And I will tell you, there's a lot of things I have seen, and, and there's not a lot of things that shake me, but this dream shook me. I didn't you know, go into all the detail of everything I saw him do. That's enough. Lord, let me write something down here. Okay. I'm going to give you the verses and I'm going to give you um, some points that he, that he revealed to me immediately. I've been praying about this, but... Alright, the verses are 2 Corinthians 7, 1 Hebrews 12, 14 1 Peter 1, 13 through 25 1 John 2, 27 through 28 Psalms 139, 23, 24 Daniel 11, 36 through 39 1 John 2 18 2 Thessalonians 2 3 through 9 Luke 18 7 through 8 Daniel 7 25 through 26 Revelation 6 9 through 11 Revelation chapter 13 Isaiah 35 8 Daniel eleven twenty one, Revelation twenty verse four, Philippians two thirteen through fifteen, Leviticus twenty twenty six, First Peter two nine, Second Corinthians six seventeen through eighteen. And I'm asking you to take this before the Lord and pray about it. In these verses, because I looked them up as the Lord gave them to me, also shows you. How you can live holy with the Holy Spirit's help to God's standards, not man's. All right, here's the points that he gave me. And, and I'm going to read them to you. Normally I don't do this, but I feel like I need to this time. Russian roulette. It is a potentially lethal game of chance in which players place a single bullet, a round, in a revolver gun, spin the cylinder, holding the bullet in its chamber to where its location isn't known, then places the muzzle of the gun to their opponent's head or their own, and pulls the trigger. If the loaded chamber aligns with the barrel, the muzzle of the gun, the weapon will fire, killing or severely injuring the player. Many people are playing Russian roulette with their lives by straddling the fence. You can't straddle the fence. I know what I just said. Satan owns a fence. Satan owns a fence. So if you're trying to sit on the fence, part of you in the world, part of you serving the Lord, Satan, you, Satan. Satan's got you. All right, two. The restraining bill in this is symbolic to the restrainer the he who letteth that is holding back the man of sin antichrist from his full power on the earth found in second thessalonians 2 7 three the freedom bill is a freedom to sin for the people but will give satan the power to rule over all the inhabitants of the earth once the restrainer is removed including martyring who professes jesus's name through antichrist but again, 
only as Father God has allowed, for He is the absolute power of all. Midge, number four, Midge appeared bewitched and deceived by Antichrist because even when she saw the evil in him, she still supported him. Until the end when she had no way out, after knowing what he had just done to Bubba John and was going to do something bad to Titus. Number five, the height and build of Bubba John, although normal looking in his facial features and body, made me think in this dream he was a giant, a Nephilim. Excuse me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Number six. Antichrist cannot rise to full power until he who letteth the restrainer, again of Second Thessalonians 2, 7, is removed. Same in the dream. Until that restraining law, symb symbolic of the restrainer, of he who letteth, until it's replaced with the freedom law, the absolute law of freedom, Antichrist freedom to rule, unhindered, that's where it's at. The freedom law is the freedom for Antichrist to rule, unhindered, controlled by Satan. Seven, the restrainer is about to be removed because there's no more space between it and Antichrist rise. This is what the 50% mark means, because anything over 50%, then the law is effective immediately and the restrainer is removed. Eight, so that's where we stand right now. Eight, this dream shows both sides of Antichrist's character. The deceptive, charming, suave, well-loved, charismatic side, and the cruel, brutal, cold-hearted, unremorseful side. These are traits of Satan and his fallen ones. We know this because of the way Antichrist being fully possessed in op is operating in the characteristics found in Satan and his kingdom, according to Scripture 2. And this will be in some of those verses. And it says that Satan, he, he, he's the father of lies. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy, but he can pass himself off as an angel of light. It's all of them. All characteristics. If they work in deceit, and they're normally cruel, they're going to be charming, loving, kind, fun. Yeah. Ten. Antichrist is loyal to no one but Satan. Eleven. Antichrist easily overpowered and killed the Nephilim Bubba John, revealing he is powerful in many ways. And number eleven. The white handkerchief of Mary O'Donnell. Shows that he had already surrendered his authority to, to the Antichrist. His position as government has already been surrendered to Antichrist, which is where a lot of the world is. All right, that's all I have. So I'm asking that you would pray about all these things. Lay them before the Lord. Don't take my word. My mom always told me, even her, she said, I love the Lord and I will not deliberately lead you astray. But I'm human, so you take everything to the Lord. And you ask Him for answers in this word, because this word will never fail. Even if they change the physical word, it is forever settled. Jesus is the word made into flesh, and He is forever settled in heaven. Which means you can't change Him. And if you love Him, and you have that word in your heart. You have Jesus in your heart. You've got the word. You put this in and Holy Spirit will make sure when you pray and you ask that you get the right discernment. You get the right understanding of it. Because he's not going to let you be deceived or misled. That's why you pray before you read too. All right. With that being said. It's time to quit playing. You know, I was going to give a warning one before I started this dream. To let you know it's got some graphic things in it. And the Lord said no. He said because some people will not watch it. Some of my lukewarm people will not watch it. And, and some of my soft hearted will not. And he said and they need to know what's coming. I'm telling you. I've seen worse than this. This still though it's hard. When the restrainer moves. When Antichrist rises to full power. 
all restraints to hold back evil, except where God steps in, is removed. Satan has freedom to do every single thing to every person on the earth he chooses to do unless God steps in. And I say that because there's times, even though it's a time when we know that the Christians will be martyred uh, of destruction and desolation and plagues and all this, there's still a remnant. And God will work mighty miracles for them. But again though. It is Satan's allotted time. And Satan's time. Antichrist's time. I was talking to my friend of 30, over 30 years. Love her. I love you. My friend. <laughs> I'm not giving her name. With that being said. We were talking. And Antichrist's reign has to happen. It's foretold. But. For Jesus' millennium brain to happen, we have to have this to happen. And for sin to be fully eradicated and the Satan to be fully put away and all that, it has to happen. So I'm praying for the Lord's will, perfect will to be done. But I am praying for those left behind. I'm praying for the remnant, praying for the 144,000. I'm praying for everything as the Lord leads the witnesses. Yeah, definitely them. And, and I'm praying. I'm praying and praying as the Lord leads. Any place that the severity can be lessened, not just for America, because we're fallen, we're Babylon, we're down, we're history. But God is merciful. There's still children of his that live here. But I'm not just limited to my country. I have a dear friend in Sweden. I pray for Sweden, but I pray for the whole world. There's people in Africa, there's people... I'm in contact with all the time. We have Pastor Imran in, in Pakistan and other people. I don't know if they realize the time or the season, but I do. And if you do, it's your responsibility to pray for your brothers and sisters and to pray for, for the whole thing. Not just your four and no more. You're called to war. It's a battlefield. Pick up your sword. But in all this, Make sure you're ready. There are those that the Bible says is Lord, Lord. Did we not cast out demons in your name? Did we not feed the poor and the hungry? And he said, depart from me, I never knew you. As Christians, he's talking about. That at the time of his coming or of their death or whenever. They had sin in their life. Or were aligned somehow with Satan. You know, it's it, there's so much. I'm just learning the depths of it. That's why I seek the Lord. And I ask the Holy Spirit, check me. Check me. Check me off and go deep. Go deep inside me. Check me. That Psalms 139. You know, I think it's 24, 25. The, Psalms, the last two verses in Psalms 139. Pray that daily. Pray Psalms 51. Create in me a clean heart. Because it's possible it would not be in there. I think Psalm 51 starts with verse 10, I believe. Create me a clean heart, O Lord, renew a right spirit within me. Um, cast me not away from their presence, restore me the joy of thy salvation. It's not the exact order how it goes. But these things are possible. Be ye holy as I am holy. They're not impossibilities. They are if you try to do them within your own strength and your own understanding. That's why John 14, 26 tells us, the Holy Spirit will bring all things to remembrance and he will teach us. First John 2.27 calls the, the Holy Spirit the anointing. Still the same. Multiple times he's called the anointing. Get your heart right. Get your life right. And if the Holy Spirit shows you something. I've had to. He's shown me some painful things in my life. And I've asked the Lord how to deal with it. What do you want me to do? And, it, and when you see something, you got to be willing. And it does include cutting people out of my life. I did. I cut the ties in Jesus' name. And I'm going forward. I'm going forward. And I will not be stopped. I will not be deterred. I had my face set as an adamant stone. For whatever the Lord has called me to do. And to see him to be forever by his side in heaven. If you love person, place, or thing. 
more than Jesus. It's an idol. So check yourself. Jesus said himself, if you're a mother, father, brother, sister more than me, you're not worthy of the kingdom of God. You know, and that even, that goes even for our children. You know, and, and my children are grown, but I still love them. But they cannot come. They cannot come before Jesus. They cannot. Neither can your husband, your wife. You, you, you can't. It's an idol. If you put anything before Jesus, they're idols. Now I understand our family, especially younger kids, are dependent on us for needs. And we love them, or should love them. But they still cannot come before Jesus Christ. Or you're not fit for the kingdom of God. That's scripture. Look it up. And instead of just saying, well, where is that at? Look it up. The Lord has showed me, you do your part, and I'll do my part. So, get down and study yourself. Quit depending on other people to teach you. I mean, there's nothing wrong with learning, but you got to get in there and do it yourself. Because if not, you can be misled. If not, you can be deceived, because other people might misinterpret, uh, not intentionally, and, and lead you astray. There are many doctrines that's been made by one verse, misunderstanding of one verse. And that's why you take your verse, okay, Lord, I think I know what this means, but can you show me? And he'll bring other verses if you will listen, and you will let him lead you, and you'll start searching it out. He'll show you, the Holy Spirit will show you, but the other verses brings it together in different chapters, in different places sometimes, to where you have the complete understanding at that time of what the Lord's trying to show you. But you got to be willing to do it. You have to spend time with Him. You have to spend time with Jesus. Or you're not going to be able to stand. And you have to listen to the Holy Spirit. And you know, sometimes the Holy Spirit will speak through other people and show you things. Don't bristle. Don't, don't just discount it. Take it to the Lord. Lord, is this real or not? Is there something in me or, 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 or is there something in them? Do I need to show me how to pray? And be obedient to whatever he says. All right, with that being said, I'm going to get off here. But I want to, want to speak to those that don't know Jesus. If you don't know Jesus, let me tell you. He is a love like no other. And he is faithful. Deuteronomy 7, 9 calls God the faithful God who keepeth covenant to a thousand generations. Keepeth covenant. He promises to be our, our father. He promises to be our friend. He promises to be our husband, the supplier of all our need. He is faithful. He will give you peace when there is no peace in the world. He will give you joy. His joy will be your strength. So please, I ask you today, accept him in your heart and say this little prayer with me. And also ask for his Holy Spirit. I've, I've explained to you how the things that the Holy Spirit does, part of it, a small part. When you ask him into your heart to receive him, because he will come in when you get saved. But the baptizing is that power. When Jesus was baptized, that's when baptized and came out of the water and the Holy Spirit descended on the as a dove upon him. That's when the power of God, the Holy Spirit, the action, the moving part, took effect and he started preaching and teaching and healing and delivering. He was still God in flesh. But it's all three in one. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit that makes up the Trinity. So, let's ask for the Holy Spirit too. Please say this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, speak to my heart. Change my life. Wash me clean and forgive me of all my sin. I am a sinner, but you can set me free. I believe you are the Son of the living God, Jehovah, who reigns and rules in heaven. I believe you were born of a virgin birth and that you gave your life freely, dying on the cross for me. But you rose victorious, and therein I can now be free. And dear Jesus, I ask also, 
for your Holy Spirit to come and baptize me with his power and fire, so that I can not only be all I need to be, but he can lead me with understanding, and I have become teachable in all ways, and will move in the power of his anointing. I ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. And it's that simple. You know, it says it's by grace that you're saved. I had some lady point out and say that I was all wrong. And I'm not pointing out anything to pray for. Because I said you work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. The Bible says you work out your own salvation by fear and trembling. But it's not by works that you're saved, but by grace. The works is the part where you have to apply yourself. You have to read. You have to pray. You have to sing. You have to worship. You have to get to know the Lord. The works of your hands. I pick up my Bible. This is a work in action. I'm reading the works of your hands. So, if you have just accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we'd like to hear from you. We'd like to encourage you too. Um, you can contact us at pray.856 myjesus at gmail.com um, Most likely you'll get me or Miss Serena or Frances, you know, the Lord, whoever the Lord leads. Um, I usually go in after as the Lord leads. I don't go in there all the time, but I do pray over every single one. And we would like to hear from you if you if you have accepted Jesus and you don't have a Bible, I recommend you getting getting a hard copy because they're changing the Bibles and, and they have online a lot of changes online. Even a fake Jesus in the chat. What is it? GPT or something like that. Pray over everything. Pray over absolutely everything you say and do. Because you want to guard what you put in your spirit. Uh, if you have a prayer request, now we do accept prayer requests, and, and we do know we will we will come up behind you. Like when you um, submit a prayer request, a lot of times we'll say, "Well, what what verses are you standing on?" Because you need verses to stand on. If you're sending in prayer requests for your your saved loved ones, we pray for those too. But you need to grab hold of verses to stand on, even for that. Whatever prayer request, but remember, we can pray, and we will pray, and we will pray. But there comes a point. You've got to step out and pray too in faith and not ride on the faith of others. And I'm just saying this because I used to do that. I used to go to everybody a long time ago to pray for me, pray for me, pray for me. But I wasn't doing much praying myself. You know, pray this. You know, and we've got to do our part too for God to meet us. You do your part halfway, he will meet you above and beyond. All right, with that being said, I'm going to get off here. Know that we love you. We're praying for you. So God bless. Stay under the blood. And remember Jesus is Lord. And he is coming. And he is coming. And if he's not. You know. It's, it's not, um, he is coming. But if. As some people says. He's not. Then why would all the prophetic signs be fulfilling? And again. I'll refer people to the Euphrates River. It's drying up. If it's not dried up already. That is prophetic for the king of the east of Revelation to meet for the battle of Armageddon. All right. God bless. Stay under the blood. From Tennessee, bye-bye.